my whole world is not my sexual mm-hmm. orientation even though like my tiktok and stuff is like very aggressively queer like that's not how i live my everyday life i'm like oh i happen to be gay sometimes i forget like oh my god queer isn't your whole personality that's so crazy for straight people to comprehend welcome to queer talk the number one podcast to connect you to all of your favorite queer creators in a space where we share our stories on all things queer related and hey if you are new listen to this or if you're old listen to this and haven't followed us on spotify give us a follow and subscribe on apple podcasts guys we're now streaming full video episodes on youtube um you can watch these episodes on anything you want tv phone tablet wherever you're tuning in so be sure to hit that subscribe button link to watch is in the description below today our guest is a former director actor producer for buzzfeed she used to go into celebrities' houses and, like, fucking film them and shit, too. I, f- <laughs> I forget what it's called, but it's cool. She's a TikToker, and she's also starting a new podcast show that I'm very excited for her. Uh, you can find her at mtaren on TikTok. Please welcome my good friend, Mari. Hi. Thank you for having me. I wasn't Thank aware you. we were filming the whole thing is going to be up. Oh, boy. Yeah, I just started season two on YouTube because the people wanted to see some video. Glad I uh, made my bed. (laughs) Bed looks good. (laughs) Also, Frankie is right here. Where's Frankie? She just hopped up on my lap. She was uh, in her little perch. Did I tell you that I did a DNA test for her? It came back? Not yet. I just got an update that it's processing the data. (laughs) because we know she's got to be like part bangle right like that's what i'm saying i think a lot of people think that their cats are special but my god damn it my cat is fucking special we're gonna find out why your cat's more like genetically special than minnie for sure minnie yeah. is just like a tabby cat but frankie has like markings she does she has markings she has this silky coat your cat mom I am. Um, I'll I'll also share something that could be borderline creepy. I think I already told you this. So, uh, you know, at like age four to five months, your cat starts to lose like baby teeth. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Um, (laughs) And I'll tell the listeners too. Yeah. So (laughs) my cat was playing with a toy and I thought that she had picked something up in her mouth and like spit it out or something. So I went to go like pick it up so she wouldn't choke. And it was a baby tooth. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. Like her first baby tooth. Let me save it. <laughs> so Did I you put it, it on a necklace? I put it in a little baggie. Uh, I thought about it, but I mean, that whole like seashell woo-woo thing was like 2004. So it's kind of like not in mm. style or else I would have. Which like, tooth was it? Do you want me to show you? I have it. No. I, okay. don't want I can go look. I can, I can, we can really examine it. It might be a canine. It might be a molar. It might be an incisor. We don't know. Um, I'm getting her ovaries chopped off next week. (gasps) Really? Yeah, she's getting spayed. And then they can't make little cats. I mean, that's just like a whole thing. Am I a grandma now? Like, am I a fucking, I'm not ready to be a grandma. Look at me. (laughs) It'd be really cute though. I want like a bunch of puppies to just, that my dream in life and like what I've told every girl that I've dated is that if you're going to ask me to marry you, some point during the day, that day, I have to be piled on by golden retriever puppies. Okay. And if that doesn't happen, then uh, it's a no. <laughs> no for you. That's your deal breaker. <laughs> I just need to be, because in my head, I'm like, it means they know me. Like, yeah. it means that they, I should change that because it is a little aggressive in that. Sickness and in health. Eh. Death to us part. Eh. Gold retriever Puppy puppies. Pile. Yes. <laughs> it needs to happen. I just want it. It's like the, it's on my bucket list. You got you worked for BuzzFeed, and I remember them doing those episodes where they would like get people drunk and high and like give them like puppies or food or like I guess anything like I don't know food, water, shelter, comfortability, and just watch them do shit. Did you ever do one of those? Did it ever was, was never, it ever inspiration? I was never on one of those, <laughs> but I was at BuzzFeed during times when they were shooting those and oh, I cool. remember every once in a while there'd just be like a ton of puppies like a ton of puppies around yeah and like I remember this one where they had like a puppies in like a box and you like put your hand in Ooh. and you like didn't know what you're gonna touch and it was okay. like puppies and like while they like weren't shooting I remember walking in and being like let me do it and just like Touching puppies, well, that feels sound weird, but like <laughs> touching petting. puppies, yes, petting puppies. <laughs> and, <laughs> Sorry, that's too funny. Oh, uh, and I just remember like, oh, playing with a lot of them, and 
they would be they would be running around like BuzzFeed. I wish I want to have a pup, but I have to wait until I have like a I feel like a partner and b a a yard. Yeah. Like, so that I can just because like I live in an apartment in LA and like I'm on the fifth floor and it's just hard like I it wouldn't be fair to have like a big I, I'm a big dog person so it wouldn't be fair to have a big dog in my apartment yeah that makes sense I want to get a pig and they get to big dog size and so I told they myself once cute. I get a yard I'll get a pig that feels like very Ohio in some way <laughs> we are like, allowed to have them I checked the code well you got to make sure that or if you get a mini pig that it like actually is a mini pig Yeah. And that's what my friend who, my friend's in 4-H or she was in 4-H in like high school and stuff. So she had like goats and pigs. She had like random shit. And that's what she said too. Um, But like mini pigs aren't actually mini pigs. There's no such thing as a teacup pig. They're just regular pigs. They're just small when they're born, but they don't like what they said. She said to watch out for is like not to get pot belly. Those are like the biggest fucking pigs, like the huge ass ones that they slaughter and stuff. you imagine if me like with you, this huge yeah, ass pig yeah. they're like super smart too they really are which and i think clean. is yeah which i think is so crazy considering we decided we deemed them for consumption instead of for domestic and dogs no offense are a lot dumber and pigs are somehow eat, being eaten and not dogs i find that interesting I find it interesting at all that we deemed some things worthy of eating or not worthy of eating, however you value them, I guess, and some as pets. Probably because we had bacon and we were like, whoa, there's no top in that. Yeah, (laughs) like, oh my God. There has to be something based on like domesticating dogs and dogs being like better worker animals. You don't really see pigs like herding sheep. (laughs) Yeah, true. Could you imagine? <laughs> You'd be like, get it, babe. Like, <laughs> I want a pig. Okay, well, when you get a pig, I'll. My cousin had a pig for a minute. He yeah. lives in New Orleans, and his uh, boyfriend, his parents live on like a farm, and they had a pig for a while Ooh. named France, Francine. They're um, so smart. You can train them to go outside, or you can train them to go in a litter box. They're, they're fucking awesome. I have a funny story with the pig thing though. There was this um, very viral TikTok about this girl who had a pig. And I was like, huh, that's really interesting. I like, she seems like familiar. And I was like, huh, um, I feel like I've seen her before. And I checked her profile and she is literally from Ohio. And I was like, hmm, okay, let me go back to where I might see her. And I checked Instagram. I checked Snapchat. I checked Facebook and I couldn't find anything. So I decided to go to like my dating profiles and oh, I had matched with her and we talked about her pet pig and I saw her viral fucking TikTok and I was like, that's interesting. Did you hit her up? We had like talked, but it just, you know, fizzled out on a dating app or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. So we like never went out on a date or anything. And I, I never like hit her back up being like, Hey, I'm on TikTok too. I just didn't do any of that. I was like, yeah. Saw your big video. <laughs> if she you want to reconnect, she could have been like, saw your other videos. Yeah. Be like, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I feel like you're even lucky that you had somebody like respond to you on the apps. Aww. Like, I am on the apps, but I don't really like, I've never had success. And all my okay. relationships have been people that I've met in person and it's just like a lot of people you match and then you don't say anything and I'm like why are you matching match and and then just you go oh my god you're so gorgeous oh my god you're stunning and then nothing oh that's (laughs) even more game than I have I'll be like hi what is that dog in the picture's name Uh, like (laughs) something like completely like I oh man but there's like a girl that I matched with on tinder and on hinge and nothing did you like bring up the fact that you've matched and been like hey hey buddy no if we match on one more then maybe (laughs) yeah if we if we get on bumble then i'll be like all right third time's the charm right Um, like let's make it happen no i i stopped i stopped dating apps i deleted them all i haven't had them for like two months yeah, I just stopped it completely because 
I didn't really have much luck either. Like the only person that I have like really seriously dated was my first long-term girlfriend. And that was off of Bumble. So it's like, you have 24 hours to respond. So it's like people who actually give a shit past like external validation. I feel like that's like one of the better apps, to be honest, because of the time sensitivity. And you can't go back and like be like, okay, look at all my matches. Let me like get some, you know, external whatever. And like, just like message them back, you know, or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Like, and I don't do that anyways. I feel like if you match, you didn't say anything. Like, you know, if you it's resurface kinda, on another yeah. app, then it's for you. But I've just never gone back into my stuff. I've never tried to spark more when Me something either. fizzled out eh, in the past. But yeah, I took them, I took them all off because like, I just didn't want to deal with it. I just was, I, I know like how it works and I can like, you know, have a pretty good success rate with it in terms of like getting s- to go on a date with someone, you know, but like, it just is a lot of fucking effort. It feels like a especially lot of now, effort. especially now. I feel like oh. because like I'm not about to just like go out and meet up with somebody who's like not taking the virus like seriously. So you start by like FaceTiming, and then like that can be kind. Of, I don't know. It's just like there's something very special to me about like meeting somebody in person and yeah. feeling the vibe mm-hmm. and like not wasting anybody's time. I yep. feel like because you can feel that you somebody you can be attracted to somebody and just like it not you know like click like that and you know in person and I feel like there's a lot of pressure associated with the apps and that mm-hmm. like somehow subconsciously like gets me I don't know feeling just like weird and I feel like oh uh, we both think each other's like cute at least I did like in the pictures yeah. and now I'm like what if I don't know, like, it, there's just more pressure where if you meet somebody in person, you're like, I don't know if they like me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they think I'm hot. This is just friends for right now. So there's like no pressure of that. And like, yep. I mean, I'm not opposed. I'm not opposed. You and I became friends from TikTok. Like, yeah. But also that is a little different too, because seeing somebody's like, like, you can see a lot more of like who someone is. I feel like I on so. TikTok. I mean, I think there are some people that are very good at just like showing their best sides, but I think a lot, you can get like some really good intel when someone has a bunch of videos, you can really get to know someone, you Mm -hmm. know, and get to know their vibe closer than you would a dating app, I think. And like, I think you're right when you're talking about, you know, there's less pressure, but also you can make a lot of like better decisions when someone's in person, you meet someone for the first time, you can judge the vibe, you can judge, you know, there's a lot of things that you can see up front that gives you a, you know, a green light or a, or a red light or like a, a friend light, whatever the friend light mm-hmm. is, that's a purple light. We'll call it purple light. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or I guess you could be like, I don't know about this person. And you'd be a yellow light. I don't know. It's like delayed when you're on a dating app. And you also just know that you get along with somebody. I feel like already, like I get really mm-hmm. anxious before I go on dates. Like it's super, super nervous because I'm like, I don't know. Are we going to be able to like talk about stuff like are we gonna be able to vibe like on that level and like if you meet somebody in person like my ex-girlfriend like when we met you could just tell that you can like get along and you're gonna be able to talk and like have conversation but every time I've gone on a date like with somebody that I met online I've been like oh god like what if we're not gonna be able to like talk I did go on a date with this girl from TikTok recently oh fun did it go well yeah, I mean, but <laughs> <laughs> you're like, oh, uh, uh, you did. Is it hot in here? <laughs> it's like, oh I mean, she is. She's very cool. Um, she's a musician. She's very talented. Um, it's nothing serious right now. Yeah, so that makes sense. She's um, talented. She's got a lot of talent. I just love talented talent. girls. You know, so talented. They just get Come on, you're from the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, I you're am. I do do it, but not as like accented as you. <laughs> well, clear or Cincinnati doesn't have it as strong Cincinnati. as Chicago. <laughs> I know. I can hear it in my videos. Like, I'll watch back my videos, and I'll sometimes every once in a while I'll be like, "Whoa!" Because now, after living in LA for six years, certain words I don't say as much with a Chicago accent. And so it's like interesting, but then it always comes out. But uh, to the listeners, I am still single and ready to mingle. Um, <laughs> did you see Fletcher's Bumble ad? No, I didn't. 
Yeah, I don't know. I have worked with a lot of celebrities like in the stuff that I've done here in LA yeah. and you just start to learn that like they're just people. Everybody's just a Stars person. Stars are people too. And I'm just like, and I <laughs> I don't like when people put like celebrities on pedestals like that because I think the people we should be hyping up like that are like teachers mm. and like doctors and like sure. me as an actor myself, like I'm not doing the same thing as a like soldier. And so- for me, I've really noticed, like, I, I don't get very starstruck. I'll tell you, if Meryl Streep walked into my fucking house, I would, <laughs> I would pass out and or cry immediately. She's the exception. but like, She's my exception to the rule. I think but it's like, not because I want to fuck her. <laughs> it's because <laughs> I respect her a lot. I respect you, and I'm looking respectfully. <laughs> I'm respectfully. Like, gentlemen boners on Reddit. I think what you're saying about celebrities is right. I think that it, there is a lot of bravery and courage. Similarly to having bravery and courage to go in the military, it's it's. I think it's brave and courageous to pick a career path that is not quote unquote secure or the norm. I think that there is a lot of bravery and courage in that. You know, it's not a an easy business to get into. It's it's saturated and it's competitive. I do think that there is some merit to that. I think there's merit to musicians who are working their ass off and athletes who, you know, sacrifice a lot of time to get to where that you are. Like, you know, not every actress is an heiress or comes from a wealthy family in, in pursuit. Just a lot of them. (laughs) Just a lot of them. (laughs) Just a lot. Not everyone, but a lot. Like, I just feel like it's hard here because as people always say, it's who, you know, like Mm -hmm. so so often and it is harder like I moved here from Chicago uh with no connections like into the industry at all and so it takes a lot longer to like work your way up like network and make connections and stuff and you will realize that like there are a ton of people who have like family members or things like that in the industry that are able to help them out now that that doesn't mean that they're not talented it just means that they were dealt a little bit of an easier hand, you know? Yeah, your resources. What? Some people just have more resources. Yeah, and, like, it's taken a lot. Like, TikTok has, I feel like, given me a lot more affirmation and, and like, reassurance that, like, okay, this is something that I really, like, I've always wanted to be in this industry since I was a little kid. Like, mm-hmm. I even found, like, uh, I had a teacher in junior high who had us, like, write, like, where do you want to be in 10 years? And then like sent it back to us in ten, like 10 years later. Aww. And I still had like, I want to be an actor like Aww, on there. That's and awesome. Was, yeah. So like, I still have it. I have it in my little like memory treasure box. But TikTok has really shown me that like, but, well, because mostly because it's like a platform, like you're not waiting for anybody else to like put your stuff out there. Yeah. Like you have you and I can like make sketches and be stupid and funny. And I do wonder how much of like, what people see of me or what I portray on these social media is like me. I'd say I'm pretty much like who you see. Uh, Yeah. I would say you're pretty authentic. I mean, I didn't see any like inconsistencies or like, Oh, she's so different. I never got any of that. Yeah. I'm in a pretty good space mentally. If I was like posting, like what I'm posting now and then like crying my eyes out at home like, <laughs> constantly then I'd be like it's not what it looks like but I only cry sometimes don't you cry all the you cry a lot right <laughs> <laughs> you cry a lot you what did oh no you had like you were PMSing or something and you like texted me that you were like bawling at some show that wasn't even that sad sometimes I do cry yeah, sorry. that's okay <laughs> I just cried on camera I cried in a video it it, it was a really good video it was really raw I loved it I've only I've cried in one video I told you about it I saw that (laughs) one I told you about it I was like I cried in a video (laughs) you watched it was like a duet I think it is important um because like people do think that they know you from like the stuff that like you put out and there's a certain responsibility. I feel like if you are doing what like we're doing and like being on Mm -hmm. TikTok and like, if you're like, like I saw this one couple who like put their stuff out there and was like, we're dating now, blah, blah, blah. And like getting all of this clout and then they broke up and then getting upset that people were like asking about like, what's going on? What's happening? And I'm like, I feel like at a certain point, like if you're putting that stuff out 
to like be marketable and like to show mm-hmm. your followers and stuff like that, then part of you kind of owes it to them. I to think like- so too. I think if you came in with the intention of building a following and you were, and I don't just mean like one viral video. I mean, like you had a viral video and you're like, oh my God, like, let's do this. And then people invested into your life mm-hmm. and your relationship and your content and you don't give an answer and you just break up. Like people are wanting that to be resolved. It's like a movie that has a shitty ending or like a cliffhanger. And people are like, mm-hmm. what the fuck? I need to see what happens. Queers get invested in, I've never seen another yes. thing that like <clears throat> queers get invested in queer couples so much. I've never, oh my God, yeah. I never got on that bandwagon of like Shannon and Cammy and like, even like Shannon Fletcher and like who else Rosie and Ro- like yeah. I um like kind of know who they are but I never like watched like happy queer couples but people I got friends who do and like people are get so invested oh, are there right. like happy straight couples that people are like obsessed with I think so I I mean you have like the whole all the dating stuff right the bachelor or the bachelorette oh, everyone that's loves true. to see a happy ending and I think queer people especially they need to see mm-hmm. a happy ending I feel like they are owed happy endings but the happy ending might not always be you're together it might be like hey, I'm being single to find myself and I don't want what doesn't want me. I think that's also a happy ending. Absolutely. I'm trying to get my friend to uh, her. and I'm like, we're trying to get her TikTok to pop off because she's a musician and she's like incredible. And it's hard. It's like really hard. Yeah. I forgot how hard it is to like start from scratch and like, I, like she's queer and, and married. And I'm like, okay, well, if you want to like go the route of like queer couple, like- That's a good one. I don't know how to do that, but... I mean, queer niche is probably a great... It is a great niche to be in, to grow, to be quite honest. And TikTok still isn't super saturated. And, like, it is hard, though. Like, if in the mindset I'm in now, because I'm I'm not making nearly as much content and I'm not as motivated as I was when I first started. But also, when you first start, it's, like, liberating because you don't have anything to go on. You have a blank slate. You can do whatever the fuck you want and test and see what works and what doesn't. And nobody follows you. Nobody sees your shit. You have no clout. You can just do whatever you want. And like, I was just posting like six videos a day, like just randomly doing stuff, like just having fun. And I'm like, if I hit a thousand, I'm going to go live, you know? And I hit a thousand and I went live and I was going live like every day. And like, I had like two people on and I didn't give a fuck. (laughs) And like, I give too many fucks now. Not a lot of fucks as many, I don't know, maybe people give it my- But a couple fucks. I give a couple fucks. Yeah. I don't think I, I can't even think of six things to post in a day, let alone like I sometimes get stressed out being like, I can't think of anything, anything funny. And then like, I don't know, like if you look at my Instagram, like people who post on Instagram, like every day, I'm like, what do you post? Yeah. Because A, I don't have like anybody to take my pictures anywhere. Like my yep. friends are like shit photographers. Also like we're in a pandemic. So like I'm literally seeing like no one like I I have two people like in my bubble and so I'm just like I have no idea what to post which is why like I don't have like a huge Instagram following because I can't think of anything and it stresses me out and like TikTok I'm like I don't know I don't know what to post like is this funny though like at the beginning you're right like it's like posting for you and like things that you thought were funny like I don't know mm-hmm. I've looked back at my like first TikToks and I'm like oh boy <laughs> like well it was like <laughs> me my first TikTok your fucking ever. bruise leg yeah then you go viral I'm like I'm a comedian I write my own sketches I do all of this and blah 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 and the world is like we're gonna blow you up for getting hit by a car like <laughs> And you, like, have nothing to do with your talent whatsoever. And it's just, like, well, gnarly bruise, dude. But I look back at, like, my first TikTok. I would like to see that as, like, a thing. Like, content creators, like, show me, like, your first TikTok. And mine was me singing my own COVID lyric version of a Britney Spears song. (laughs) It's bad. I think it's it's hit me baby one more time but it's like a COVID-19 and like you do like a mutuals video where you only let your mutuals see it and you'll be like duet your like first video you ever made on TikTok (laughs) or something like that do you have videos that are like just shown friends like just friends um I don't but I I've had like a mutuals where I've had a couple mutual people just do mutuals because like they only follow influencers because most of the time I only follow influencers 
or like my family. So like anyone who's going to see it is also an influencer. So it's a great way to like, just get, you know, other influencers. I don't even know. I I only know that you can set it to like friends. And usually I do that when it's a really, it's like a dumb video, but I like think it's funny still. Or like this one that I made was, uh, I wore my like actual sorority shirt in it. And like one of my sorority sisters was like, um, funny video, maybe though, you shouldn't have like the actual letters and associate the sorority with like hazing. (laughs) And I was like, this is a good point. Um, And so I like put it on like friends or something or like, I'll get, I'll get like, I'll lose confidence with myself and sometimes be like, Oh, people don't like this one. And like, like put it on friends only Um, (laughs) or like my own private video. Oh, that'd be a funny thing to be like, Remember the thing that was like, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. Yeah. It would be like, show your private or like show all your drafts or something or die. <laughs> honestly, 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 that's funny. How many drafts do you have? Sounds like a I draft. don't. I keep my drafts neat and tidy. I have like six. Really? Yeah. I have like 32. I just like keep stupid ideas in there and stuff. I think I need to start, like, when I have an idea, because sometimes I'll forget. I'll, like, get an idea that wasn't specifically a trend, and I will forget about it if I don't do it. And I never, like, don't do it in real time because I'm, like, not really motivated on TikTok right now. And I need to I just write it in my my notes. I just put it in my notes, and then I look back. Because my my video ideas come to me at, like, 1.30 in the morning as I'm, like, about to go to bed. And then I'm, like, oh, lesbian starter kit. (laughs) <laughs> and then I like write it down and then I'll I'll forget it and then the next day I'll look and I'll be like oh yeah that's one that I'm like struggling to think of more ideas I feel a lot of pressure and being like uh because a lot of people tell me I'm like stereotyping called me biphobic and like these kind of things oh and yeah like, I like, mean, you'll get that all the time I've gotten biphobic stuff on some of my older stuff that I posted that had gone viral and it obviously wasn't my intention right? <laughs> obviously. at all. And like stereotypes are there for a reason, but like, don't take them too seriously. I think people take them too seriously. Right. Also stereotypes are, <clears throat> like you said, there for a reason. It's like, I didn't go out and buy any of the stuff that I put in that video. There you go. It was all here. <laughs> it was like, not fabricated. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thousand percent. I have a massive amount of granola at my house. So how did you like get to, like, how did you get to BuzzFeed? How did you get working in celebrities like homes? Like, how did that happen? Cause that's super cool. Um, so, uh, my friend, Brittany, Brittany Ashley, she and I were friends in Chicago. We met in like, gosh, like 2011 and both of us didn't move to LA until years, a couple years later. Um, and then when I did, uh, Brittany was still at BuzzFeed. And so she started bringing me in and bringing me on to like videos and stuff. I was just like an actor for BuzzFeed. So I wasn't like actively like working like on there. I was a contract worker. Ah, okay, got it. Um, And so then I started doing videos there. And then I met Amanda Holland who worked at BuzzFeed and she started putting me in videos and it was really just kind of networking. And then I started working for Condé Nast, which as in production. um, And that's how I started like doing these like Vanity Fair shoots and like Vogue, GQ, like and going into like celebrities' houses and like shooting like Architecture Digest and stuff like that. And I was working there up through 2019. Okay. Um, you meet a lot of celebrities and you're like, cool. When I worked with Kristen Stewart, I did get, I only got starstruck two times. One, was when Kristen Stewart was there and uh but I didn't show it and then the other time was Kelly Clarkson (laughs) but I I didn't show it (laughs) I was like no except like when Kristen Stewart was shooting so I was just sitting there and I was like she looked at me (laughs) she looked at me (laughs) she loves me I was like um I think we had a moment like I took my friend and I was like we made eye contact a bunch and she said hi so really all through who you know my friend got me a job at Condé Nast like it is all just word of mouth like every production production job I ever had is just based on referrals and stuff like that yeah that's super interesting because like 
and not that I'm in that space at all, but like, I'm in like the social media, like the marketing space. And it is hard to crack into social media marketing. And I truly, mm. the only way I've gotten in is through word of mouth and through who yeah. I knew. Yeah. My friend is the social media manager at Amazon. Like she was telling me the same thing. It's like really hard. Cause like, I mean, I went to school for psychology and fine arts. And like, if I'm like trying to get a job here, like not in the industry so I can like make money since we're in a pandemic and it's yeah. super hard because yeah. I don't have like corporate experience like other people do like mm -hmm. I'm 30 years old and like my friends have now been like building their resumes for eight years yep and I'm like what have been like acting and like doing that kind of stuff and so I found it like really really difficult to get it like jobs with just my resume but without like knowing anybody because they're like what you don't what do you think we're gonna like pick you <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, yeah over the person like, who like studied business yeah and then they they also look at like is this consistent like this person did acting right. are they now switching in the corporate world or are they just using this as like a nice job in between so they want yeah, someone who wants gaps. to be there long term and be a corporate drone, you know, like me. You should do the gaps in my resume. <laughs> it's like, uh, you, and then they ask questions like, do you have, like, can you explain the gaps in your resume? And it's like, oh, oh. Depression. <laughs> mm. Do you guys got a good Started healthcare working in a restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Started working in a restaurant. Well, I was at a restaurant and then the pandemic came. If I was you, I would like try and be like, yeah, I got a management position. I would try and just beef it up as much as you can. Like lie. Yeah. Beef yeah. it up. That's what I say. Beef it beef up. It you up. worked at the restaurant. The positions right. at titles. They, you know what I mean? I've had a friend. I had a friend put me down as a reference for uh, she was trying to get a babysitting job with like a kid who had beha behavioral health problems because she was working in psychology mm -hmm. and she put me down and I pretended to be a family like a mother of like <laughs> kids that she had babysat for like I've done that before I had an ex-girlfriend who I was like can you can I say that you were my boss because I worked as a paralegal in Chicago for two years before yeah I moved out here to like make money and like my whole family's in law but so had a bad relationship with the supervisor and I remember asking my girlfriend at the time and being like can I put your number down like and if they call you like you could pretend to be Kathy or whatever and, and she said no and we got into a huge wow. argument about it and uh but it's actually good because she's in the FBI now and so it makes sense as to like why She's a black and white, right and wrong girl. I mean, you know, you got to admire it. But like, I want someone in my corner that's willing to lie for me. I know. Well, I'm going to put you down now for anything. <laughs> put me down for anything. You know, I can talk anyone's head off and I can fucking make you look like a rock star. I'll, I'll be yours too if you want anything. And I'll be like, <laughs> uh, they'll be like, so like, what did she do at your social media firm? And I'd be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, she did marketing and a analytics and she did spreadsheets and stuff. She's really good at them spreadsheets. Managed, she managed the socials. Of all the socials. Well, <laughs> very, very well. Oh my God, did I tell you that Rosie O'Donnell followed me? No, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> the fuck? On TikTok? Was, yeah. Dude, you're going to hit 100K. You're going to hit your goal. I swear to God, by the time this airs, I'm sure you're going to you're gonna get that 6K. Maybe, maybe. Do you not want to hit it? Because then, well, no, I have a tendency of getting like having videos do really well, and then like nothing like does well for a while. Well, you have six k. That'll be easy to like. You'll have residuals like, from that video. Growth. Yeah, but then it's like yeah. you said, once you hit a hundred k, then you're done. But it's like <laughs> I know you probably won't be done. But on the off chance that you will, you're like, well, shit, I didn't think it was gonna be this quick. I didn't think I was gonna hit hundred k this quick. What the fuck? This quick? Oh, geez, I feel like it was not that quick. Like it, I started my first TikTok was in April. I was trying to tell my friend that like I knew you, you know, at like thirty k. Yeah, yeah. I was telling my friend who was TikTok I'm trying to help her with like and I'm like don't worry like it takes a long time like for me nine months <clears throat> like to get to where I am like that feels like a long time didn't like Charlie D'Amelio get like 50 million and like or 10 million in a year or something 
She's also like in the demographic 16. of TikTok. She's fucking <laughs> 16. And she was on it when like Musically was on it. She's been putting in the work and she has a whole management team and shit. Yeah. So that's true. I mean, she has nothing to do. She doesn't have to work for anything because she still lives at her parents. You know what I mean? I wish that it showed me my demographics of gay versus straight followers. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because it shows me women and men and mine's like highly skewed like so much like 87 percent female 13 i'd like to see dude. how many straight women and how many queer women i have on it i just want to see how many Ooh. straight women follow me <laughs> probably because they're like oh boy she's hot yeah i want to but... see i want to see all them questioning gals you know yeah <laughs> that'd be fun we should write we could write in a tiktok and be like hey can you add this to the pro account analytics please or just like add it in so then when people are swiping they just do the survey real quick and then they can update the analytics later and if if that person ends up being a follower then they can you know track it that way i think it's perfect tell us your sexual orientation now and then also say, would you date me? Are you single? Do you want to date me? Yes. <laughs> Ray Walker then... wants to know if you want to date her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I thought was funny, but I feel like I won't make a TikTok on it because I feel like it's super narcissistic. But like, I, I thought it was really funny. Um, like people that I have talked to that like we don't talk anymore in in a not a, like a, anything crazy like negative mm-hmm. way but also the negative ones I think yeah. it's funny because I have like my face is like the face of like a lot of the Tammy ads for the dating app and so I'm oh, like yeah. you could mute me you can block me but when you scroll you're gonna see my face motherfucker <laughs> you have to send me the like those ads and stuff I haven't seen it oh yeah I just it's funny I've been do I literally did their ads like back in the summer and so I had a lot of people who used to message me about it and then I had my one friend send me I'll send you the picture of it because I sent them a bunch of shit and I got paid to do it like a few hundred bucks Mm -hmm. to do it but it's just so funny because I'm like you can try and do whatever you want you can't help me out you can't hide from me (laughs) you can't hide from me (laughs) Oh my God, dude. Today I got a message from a girl who I went to high school with. I almost started crying. It was the nicest message that I have ever gotten. She was just saying like in high school, like how nice, like I was and that she felt like, like, I don't mean to talk myself up like at all because like high school was a, a shit show for me. I had a horrible time. People, I was bullied heavily. Like I didn't have friends and like I didn't even know people really like even knew about me and stuff like I knew a fucking ton of people but nobody ever wanted to like hang out um but she sent me this message just being like you were always so nice and I always found you to have like amazing confidence and like I took like advice from things that you said and like also like about your video like that dude sucks blah 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 you know but like Mm -hmm. She really was like, I talked to, I sent your video to a couple other friends and they were saying how nice you were in high school and stuff. And I'm just like blown like that, like the impact that we can have on somebody without ever yeah. knowing. I know it reaffirms to me why like being a good person, being a nice person, like mm-hmm. as much as you can is important just because of like the impact. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, this is so moving and just like crazy because I was like confident I was miserable yeah like I had no friends nobody wanted to hang out with me like everything that could go wrong like I feel like if there were social media when I was in high school it would have been a nightmare yeah like we had Facebook I guess but like it was like it wasn't like full-on cyberbullying it was like half-assed cyberbullying like we for a second there had a thing called honesty box and I did get fully cyberbullied like and people would like write really mean things because it would be like anonymous. And... Jesus. Yeah, I was like kicked out of lunch table like three times by people. I was told like, you know, I was never invited to parties. I was never asked to the dance. Like my senior year, my boyfriend asked me and then broke up with me like two days before prom. People would like send me text messages like for other people. Like I would like remember this one girl like sent me a text that was meant for somebody else that was like talking shit about me and like it was always always like people inviting my best friend 
who's like so fucking popular. I just hit myself in the face. My best friend, Nika, who's still my very good friend. Like I only have like two friends from high school and they were like, oh, she'd get invited to everything. And then she'd be like, can I bring Mari? And they'd be like, no. Wow. So like high school was crazy bad. And I didn't realize until I got into college that like how like having friends and being like in an environment that is welcoming, like how it feels. And that's Mm -hmm. when it really like hit me of like how hard it was. It was just unbelievable to like get messages like that. And like every once in a while, there's like a needle in a haystack and you get like somebody reaching out who's just like so kind. And then there's the other person who like, (laughs) this other girl that sent me a message in like military speak, like, you know, like alpha, beta, foxtrot. Jesus. And spelled out, fuck me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. I think there's something to be said. I think the most inspiring people, like you have to be low to be high. You know what I mean? There's like the law of polarity, right? Like you have to be at that lower end, the depths of self-esteem and all of the traumatic shit that happens, happens to you and you swing and you're on the other side of it, right? Like you use it to fuel your creativity. Like we Mm -hmm. talked about this, like the most fucked up people are funny, you know? Yeah, like whether that's currently fucked up or just like past fucked up, you know, like it doesn't matter. It fuels that stuff. And like people have more compassion and empathy and can connect with people who are going through a lot of that stuff. Like, ah, currently. I think that's yeah. very, very important as well. Because I mean, then you can't empathize if you've never been there. Very true. You can't connect. You're not relatable. Like the most relatable people have struggled. Like that's why like Jesus Christ is a one of the biggest public figures of all time for all of eternity. And he mm. like struggled. Um, the, you know, the most grossing um, Marvel franchise out of all of the stories. Do you know which one is the most? Is it Spider-Man? It is fucking Spider-Man. You're absolutely right. Cause he was a regular guy. And he, he was, was bullied. A regular guy and he was fucking bullied. And he had like an alternative childhood cause his grandparents raised him. And then, you know, like they died and like scarred me as a child. When I saw that, I was like, oh my God, old person dying on the street. What the fuck? But yeah. Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Oh my God. I cried. I mean, I cried. I guess I am a crier. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I'm not surprised there. I cried. Oh my God. I. <laughs> In also, the Tobey Maguire version? <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. also young. I was like 12 when I watched it. Yeah. But I was watching a thousand pound sisters because it's there's so many memes and like it's all over TikTok, like you know the Amy sims. try being my size, Amy. You don't know what it's like. That was so on point. Something you can do. She, I just like I've heard it. A I'm not million. the fucking baby. You're the fucking baby. <laughs> hey, I'm my bills, my bills are paid. <laughs> Sodies, what you drinking? I'm drinking sodies. sodies. <laughs> They are I funny. I am invested. <clears throat> um, I literally was just on Tammy's TikTok today looking at what she has. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where were you going? You cry at that? Yes, that's where I was going. Okay, so I had I used to watch 600 pound, my 600 pound life like after school every day in high school. I used to watch it too. It just made me super hungry, to be honest. I am. I'm about to go order food because their food looks so fucking good and I don't let myself eat like that, you know? And not that I like restrict myself, but I just don't buy like a bunch of crazy shit. And I'm like, but now I want it because now I'm like, you can have it and I can't like, what the fuck? But like, I was, this is where I was going with it. I don't let myself watch it because I used to watch it like a lot when I was 16 and I was an asshole when I was 16 and I was like fat phobic for sure. And I like thought somehow that like this was like a weakness and similarly to how I thought of addiction and I thought they were somehow inferior in the mental illness or the mental illness categories. And I thought somehow anxiety and depression were somehow more superior. (laughs) Ha ha ha. It's funny because I have those. And I didn't let myself watch it because I've had a little bit of shame of like how I like used to be fat phobic and I'm obviously not anymore. Mm -hmm. And I started watching it and I watched it with such new eyes today. And I just started crying because I felt so empathetic. And I was like, Mm -hmm. oh my God, where was this when I was 16? I had no empathy for anyone unless I like went through their same struggles. I like had no empathy. I could not extend it. I had no Mm -hmm. skills. And now I can. 
I have skill for something that is so I've never dealt with something like that. And I probably won't because of my genetic makeup, but like I cried. And I also just cried about my shame of like being <laughs> when I used to be fat phobic, I cried about it. And then I cried about how empathetic I felt because I'm like, they were like traumatized. Like it's a mm-hmm. trauma. It's a coping mechanism, just like right. anyone else's. I, yeah. you know what? I <clears throat> give you shit about being emotional, but I'm also very emotional and I think that it's beautiful to be in touch with your feelings and it's better than the opposite, which is holding everything in and not like letting yourself feel what you want to feel. And I can cry, especially if I like a week before my period, I'll literally cry at like anything. Like I remember seeing like a commercial for like some random thing, like, oh, one of those Tide commercials about like mom, like Tide moms, like around the Olympics or something and I was just like bawling um (laughs) but I think it's I think it's great like to be sensitive and not feel like you have to like hold anything back or in and and it's cool especially from somebody who does like comedy you know you're multifaceted Brie oh my god thank you also Brie and Mari are still in The Bachelor right yes Oh my God. I, I was a little confused at one point. I was like, what are we in? What are we I in? made quite the transition there that had nothing to do with anything else. Oh my God. So Brie is a favorite. She's a favorite. She had a, I like Brie on date. I like her too. I think she's a real winner. I think she's going to go far. Um, I, I like, like Serena Mari. P. Serena, is it P? Serena P or Selena P. Serena. I like, I don't know. I'm still not, I still don't know everyone. Serena C. I think she's like taller and she's bald and, She's black. I oh, think. she's great too. She's super nice. The, I like her a the lot. The one who went on the date <clears throat> with Matt this time, I liked her because she's like me and she's like, I'm falling in like, and she's like, I need to like connect with somebody a lot longer before yeah. I like feel. And I was like, I feel you girl. Like, yes. I like um, the girl who brought the dildo on the first date. Katie. Yeah. Katie's I've never cute. been into the bachelor. She's until kinky. This year. She's gotta be kinky in bed. Swear. I think MJ is like, She's got that blonde hair. Ooh, mm. the curly. Yeah. Yeah, she's super cute. Also, um, these people are like younger than me. Everyone's younger than me. And I feel like they look so much older. And like, yeah. I'm just like, like one of them's 21. That's super young. No, nope. I'm like, when I was 21, I didn't want to get married. That bitch probably doesn't want to get married either. She's on there for clout. Talk one of them wants to be the bachelorette. I mean, that's what's going to happen. Well, yeah, like they always pick like a fan favorite who like didn't um, get chosen, you know, which it, it's a really good like foray into if you're wanting to be in that influencer space or be an actor like all reality TV is is like that. I would never, uh, I would never do reality TV. Let's talk about your TikTok that you had that went super viral, has like a quarter million views. And you're talking about, you know, your profession as an actor, you know, some conversations that you've had with your agent about, you know, them thinking that you're pigeonholing yourself because you're queer and you're only doing queer content. Like you're somehow not marketable to like a straight audience. Tell me a little bit about like your journey as an actor and those kind of things that like loom over your head as a queer person. The guy who said this to me was not my actual agent, is a prospective new agent. Gotcha. Um, So so he's not not getting the job. Right, right, right. (laughs) He's fucking fired. (laughs) Like I, but so yeah, definitely was not my agent, but it's something that like for, it took me a long time to be comfortable being fully out and queer in the industry because I always was afraid that it would, I would be typecasted um, and things like that. Um, But also that's because just within the last like five years, I feel like even two or three years, like being queer and stuff is like, is just more, way more widely accepted and just Mm -hmm. way more people are like feeling free to, to be themselves. And, and so for a while, I remember being like, I'm only going to come out as bi. Like if I make it in the industry, that's what I'm going to say. And like, I consider myself queer because like, I don't, I'll hook up with dudes dudes every (laughs) once in a while. Um, Like, just right here and there. Um, but like this situation, like this one agent, straight white man, we met and he was, I mean, he was pigeonholing me, you know? And basically I just really, I do wish that I had like said something in the actual moment of, yeah. um, but I 
didn't. I was just like, no, I'm not going to cut my hair. You know, that was a big one. I was like, well, have you, you know, if you're going to be doing queer content, if you want to go, you know, do queer roles. It's like, and I was like, I don't have to do queer roles. Like I want to do any role, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, sure. If something that fits me and is queer happens to be queer, but like I, my life is not surrounded by like my whole world is not my sexual mm-hmm. orientation even though like my tiktok and stuff is like very aggressively queer like that's not how i live my everyday life i'm like oh i happen to be gay sometimes i forget like my god queer isn't your whole personality that's so crazy for straight people to comprehend instagram people on instagram comment and say queer is my whole personality and i'm like you guys are mean here <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, instagram is I hate it. People will just comment a reel and be like, don't care. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't, I can't do this. Like TikTok is so nice, dude. Like I have like 5,000 comments on that one video that you're talking about. And not Mm -hmm. a single fucking one is somebody being like, you're hot. Let's bang. They're all like, honey, like you're so amazing. You're a beautiful soul. You're beautiful. And I'm like, thanks. But like, can somebody tell me that they want to fucking rail me? Yeah. Like, (laughs) can you say that? And also a paragraph under and be like, but I also want to fuck you. Like also please objectify me a little. (laughs) You're like, no one's objectifying me. Like what? They even care about me. Damn. But I was, I would take that over Instagram. Um, but so yeah, basically my biggest fear was coming to fruition with what this guy said, which is what I was always worried about, which was that I would have less roles, less jobs. Um, I wouldn't be believable to be straight. And then he's like saying all of this and then suggested that like lean in even more, I guess, to like the queer gay thing and like cut your hair and like appear more like tomboyish. I don't know. The funniest, funniest comment I got on that video was somebody saying like, you look hella queer without even having to having to cut your hair like they're like Mm -hmm. "Mm, you already look real queer and I'm like I know (laughs) right right (laughs) yes and I thought that was so funny I was like real that's real but I can femme it up and I do have the ability to like actually play straight like of course um definitely think you can it doesn't I don't feel as comfortable you know but that's the fun thing about acting but so this guy sucked and he has a skewed view of the industry. And I've had a bunch of people in the industry reach out to me and be like, this is not how it is. Like, I'm sorry you went through this, but like this guy's living in like old times. And I just remember like calling my mom and my brother and like talking to them about it. And they were just like, fuck this guy. He also added in there that I didn't put in the video. And he was like, you're cute, but you're no bombshell. So you have to like, keep that in mind. And like, and I'm like, listen, like, I know that, but like, you don't have to say it. I just felt like a huge, like reality check of like, whoa, this is like Hollywood. When people talk about like Hollywood, like having somebody like tell you you're not hot or like, maybe you need to lose weight or stuff like that. And I had Uh never experienced that. And I haven't since. And so it was just like, to imagine that this is probably how it was for people yeah. like on the regular, like very lucky right now to be in a space that I don't want to say the wrong thing and say that like being queer is cool, but like mm-hmm. it sets you apart as an actor. And like, it is important now in the industry to have queer actors play queer roles. Yeah, it really is. And that I think is, is it's a cool place to be in. Queer actors play queer roles, but queer actors play straight roles. And then Kristen Stewart had like a good article about this, like what are the limits on that? And like, cause mm-hmm. then you start getting into, so then straight people can't play queer. And it's like- Well, they gotta play it better. <laughs> yeah, I mean- They're not doing be very better. good. You have to be a better actor. I think, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I think it should be the best actor, like the best person for the role. Yep. Um, because then it does start getting into like, well <laughs> then gay people shouldn't, play straight roles but also it's just like underrepresented people deserve that until we're completely equal and even you know yeah that's important to like have that kind of representation here's my thing I think that it is easier for queer people to play straight roles because the default is straight so at one point they were straight they didn't come out of the womb gay as fuck unless they just had such a great upbringing that they never really like had to deal with that which isn't in the majority 
So like, yeah, queer people can play straight people because they were playing it their whole fucking lives. But guess what? Straight people don't know how to play queer roles because queer is a minority. We're underrepresented. We've had to face a lot of scrutiny and a lot of crazy shit over the decades and centuries. And you don't know how to do it because you aren't a part of the community. You know, mm-hmm. it's almost as bad as like people back in the day when, you know, you women weren't allowed to be actors and like so men. men played yeah. the women. And then you had white people playing black people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you don't like that's obviously all 100 percent no now. And it's been like that for a while. But like you don't think about it when it comes to those kind of things because you don't outwardly, you know, show it with your skin color. But like, Mm -hmm. that's just my personal opinion. Like they don't understand what it's like to be queer, but we definitely understand what it's like trying to be straight. That's a really great point. And for some reason, I have not thought about that as like a reason. Like that's absolutely true. Yeah, hundred percent. Unless you're my one friend, my best friend Zoe, who like literally popped out fucking gay as shit and like has like such a liberal family and like was like gay in high school. And I was like, what? You were gay in high school? like oh my god no but that's absolutely true yeah and yeah. like being gay myself when I look up like if I see a gay storyline I'm like Ooh. like are you yes. gay is this actor gay like I just yeah. started watching the wilds I like binged the wilds I'm fully in love with the girl who plays Shelby Ooh. and I was like is she gay she's playing gay and she's bisexual <laughs> <laughs> You can feel it. It's a vibe. Like Jojo yes. Seawall just came out. Oh, looking back, so I never followed Jojo, but like I've seen her stuff come up. Looking back, I mean, yeah, she's got like the kind she's of the vibe, essence. the she's low vibe. voice. Like, yeah, it's not even just a low voice because like I don't have a low voice. Right. It's not always about the voice. It's just like sometimes it's the voice. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's mannerisms. Sometimes it's there's just something that's queer and is not heteronormative <laughs> and everyone kind she's of thought so young she's 17 I know she's 17 and like I don't know it feels a little off-putting that it seems very calculated and that like she was probably had to like get the go-ahead or something oh for sure like because these videos that she's doing <laughs> like but she still hasn't like a dr- outwardly said it she had a on her story because I have two friends that are absolutely obsessed with her and I had a whole argument with them today because I don't know how you're, I just have opinions independent of her coming out. I think it's great. I think it's awesome. I think that she's built a million dollar business and I think that's amazing. I think what she's accomplished is huge. I just like, I think she's always on. Like I never see her like as a normal human being. Like I just see her like a walking, she's like a walking, talking, like Walmart store. Blogger. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Like, I had so many roasts on my phone and, and I don't mean to like make fun of her or anything, but it's like, she's 17 and she's dressing like she's like, like when I used to dress at the limited two and I just don't under, <laughs> I have way better ones. Hold on. I, I might not get, honestly, Elise might be pissed that I even have this in here. I've never really <laughs> watched her, but I saw a video and it seems exhausting and it seems like she is always on and like, it's a lot. I mean, good for her. I'm glad she feels comfortable to come out. I don't love this whole like playing a game of it and like doing it kind of as a speculation, like teasing it that you're maybe queer. Like I think that it's important to address it if you're going to, you know, if you're going to come out and like she's making money off of these videos. Yeah. Like I think it's important to be like, also, yes. Everybody sitting here being like, maybe is she, isn't she? Like, is this Lady Gaga song meaning this or that? Like, but say it something. means it, though. That's the thing. Like, no one makes shit like that if they're not queer. Like, no straight person is like, I'm going to tease being gay. You know what I mean? Like, I it still is... think it's important that she's, well, she's doing it <laughs> and getting videos out of it. Like, yeah, she's also like 17. I got to give her a yeah. little bit. She's not even, she's still underage. But I also, like, I have a hard time taking her seriously. A, she's completely out of my demographic. She's almost 10 years younger than me. But also, she acts 10 years younger than herself because her demographic is like that. And I get it. Like, you're playing a role. But, like, she is just a character. Like, I don't – like, Miranda Sings is a character for a kid. But, like, she's a normal human being, like, off screen and, like, you know, has, like, a very, like, healthy – I just like see it and I'm like, this is like, when is she off? Like, when does she like not have her hair? Maybe she loves to have her hair like that. Great. But like, when does the facade end? 
I can't connect to her because I don't see her as authentic human. I see her as like a robot. I see her as, you know, she built a million dollar business. Great. But like, so do the fucking wiggles. (laughs) And I don't want to eat. Well, she's never coming on your show. (laughs) I don't want to eat fruit. I don't want to eat fruit salad anymore. You know what I mean? It was yummy back then, but I don't want to eat it anymore. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a bird. <laughs> that was a good roast. I feel bad. I feel bad because she's underage. I just like, I'm happy for her. I just can't get on board with, right, I, I wouldn't watch your, her content. I mean, it makes sense. Like I don't watch any 17 year olds content, but also it doesn't really come up on my stuff. I'm happy for her. I'm glad she's come out. She's got a fuck ton of followers. And if she can help use her platform to normalize, but that's why I think it's a little important then to just address it. True. And yeah. You're to right. be like, it's okay. I'm not hiding because it feels still like she's like kind Maybe of ashamed she can't. of it. Maybe she As can't. Saying, Maybe though, she's in breach of contract and that's the only way that she could come out without like fucking up shit with her business. But also it's like, I don't know. You have that much money and that much fame. I don't think that it's in contract. I think she's stretching it out for the most vis- like Ooh. visibility and kind of thing. Okay. I don't think that you have to come out ever. Yeah. Um. So I'm not saying that, but- it just feels like she's capitalizing on it, which I mean, if it's her sexuality, then go for it. Then sure. Yeah. But also just like own it too. And just say like, yeah. when you have a platform like that, I think it's important. And I hope sure. I look forward to like having a platform, like even of just the amount of followers I have, like it's, I think it's important to like make people feel safe and like you have a responsibility. Oh yeah. If you've like, we talked about it, come full, full circle. You have a responsibility if you're, making your life about getting followers and stuff like that then yeah there's some things that you just got to do I think and also like I would give her a little bit of slack because I mean like I don't know me at 17 I probably would just like do whatever like my managers and my parents said and if they're like you know this is a great way to do that and she's like okay you know what she's she I don't know if she has that wherewithal to be like you know what right. I don't think this is right and I don't think I should capitalize on that I've capitalized on enough already you know like I've made enough oh money. my god like, at this 17 yeah I'm telling you I didn't even like know who I was really until I was like <laughs> within the last like 18 months Me too. I've like found myself and so god when I was 17 I was stupid yeah so was I but I was realizing I was gay when I was 17 I mean Just- she has she's different than a regular 17 year old she has a lot of responsibility and I think she's done really well with it um to like a certain extent as much as she can but like, mm-hmm. there are some pitfalls. Your brain isn't fully formed until you're 25. And like, you, you know, still listen a lot to your parents and these people, you know what I mean? And you, she hasn't gotten her voice yet. I hope that what, even though it's, she's doing it in the way that she's doing it. I hope that this brings about more authenticity. I hope she learns more about herself. And I hope that her content does become more like relatable in terms of like a human and not a robot because like I would really love Mm. to see that I would watch her content if she like does like very uncut vlogs like hey guys this is my life you know none of the glitz and the glam I will watch every single thing I will post Mm -hmm. about it I would love it I want to see that I want to see her be a full-fledged human being how'd she get to I'm just like out here like damn how you get so many people to want to know what you're doing with your life I feel like Nobody cares about what the fuck I'm doing. Like, Me too. <laughs> like, damn. I feel like if I made a vlog, people would just be like, cool, bitch. Like, you do nothing. <laughs> like, yeah, we don't have enough clout yet. <laughs> for people to yet. Do, but I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, I just got I just want to get to my, once I get to my 100,000 and I asked my friend and I was like, she's got like fucking over a million. And I was like, did you get a sweatshirt from TikTok when you hit? And she said, no. Oh, they didn't get a plaque or anything. YouTube gives plaques at least. That's what I said. She's got fucking 1.3 million followers. And I'm like, so when I hit 100,000, am I going to get a sweatshirt? (laughs) And she was like, no, I didn't get anything. And I was like, but YouTube gives you stuff. (laughs) You get into the creator, not the creator fund that's for everyone, but you get into the the influencer platform. Yeah. Yeah. I just really just, I think I just want a sweatshirt, really. <laughs> I'd rather have a sweatshirt over brand. Well, I was like, can you make, can you make me one? I'll make you Two. one. I can, I can make, I can legit make you one. I'll send it to you. When Green you print it? I, when you hit 100K, I'll send it. And then TikTok will be like, wait, <laughs> we didn't send that to you. <laughs> can we have matching ones? 
do you want me to get one? I haven't hit 100K That's how yet. our whole relationship started. I know, but I haven't hit 100K. I would, I would just be getting one just because you wanted me to get one. I didn't. We can get you one when you hit 80. You're almost there. No, it's not a good enough. It's not good enough. I need it 100K. We'll make a video about somebody being shitty to you. <laughs> and ask for followers, and cry, which is and essentially <laughs> what I just did. Cry and then ask. <laughs> like that's I was like, oh my god, I like literally just asked people, but it happened. But that's your we'll career. See. I don't like. We'll see if they it stick with career. it. Yeah. I feel like people are gonna follow me and then they're gonna see what I post and they're gonna be like, oh <laughs> uh, no. I've never we'll unfollowed anyone because they don't come up. They come up sometimes on your for you, but like it's only if you go to your followers. So it's not like Instagram where it's just bombarding you with stories and stuff. And then you're like, I don't really like this anymore. And even nowadays, I just mute it. I don't even unfollow people because I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you could do that. I mute posts and stories. So I follow them. But Oh, on Instagram? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done that. My ex is muted. We don't follow each other, but I had muted her from my stories. Because I don't want to block or blocking feels like a lot. It's aggressive. But I'm just like, mm, you don't deserve to see what I'm doing with my life. Yeah. I mean, I just, I do it if I like had feelings for someone and I'm trying to forget them. But yeah. I want to make a big stink and then they're like, why did you unfollow me? So right. it's just easier to just mute it and just be silent about it. So I have freaky. been angry. Yeah. I have been angry and I like blocked people, but it only lasted like 12 hours. And then I unblocked. Oh, <laughs> me too. In a Me fit too. of rage. And then I'm like, but I do want to still see what they're up to. Yeah, I know. That's why you got to have a Finsta Ready to get them Instagram. out of my life. Yeah. Finsta. Uh, yeah, I do have a Finsta too. And it's such a good Finsta. Like, I do. It has nothing related to me. And I have followers in that niche. And it's like something so fucking random that no one would ever be like, is this you? Yeah. No, mine's And I'll be like, how could it be me? You know me. I saw <laughs> Just gaslight. That just show. that's gaslighting. I get I saw a TikTok that was uh, somebody who you can see. So, okay. So it was a TikTok and somebody went to their thing and they saw the page and it was clearly it's Finsta. So they clicked it and then they went to sign in to uh, like they logged out of, out of Instagram and they went to sign in with that account name and clicked forgot password. And it shows the, it's like starred, starred, starred. And then the last letter and then you're, email and then if you have a phone number associated with it you can still see oh you can shit and i tried it and it's fucking real except that i don't have my phone number associated with it and mine's connected to a fake email but that's only if they think that that is it you know what i mean like like when i like my finsta like no one i don't think that person that i like had used the finsta for i don't use it a lot I don't think that she would have realized that it was me. I don't know. <laughs> but I was like, oh, my God, what? And I, like, checked it out. All right. Do you want to answer some questions really fast? Yeah. Cool. Uh, beanies or snapbacks? Beanies. Cakes or cookies? Cakes or cookies? Yeah. Oh, fuck. <sighs> Cakes. <laughs> Cakes. I hate this. <laughs> jean, jean jackets or flannels? Jean jacket. Nice. Janelle Monae or Tegan and Sarah? Janelle Monae. Haley Kiyoko or Girl in Red? Haley Kiyoko. Giving presents or getting presents? Getting presents. <laughs> King Princess or Kehlani? Isn't King Princess like canceled now? Is she? I like um, her music. Probably Kehlani. Okay. I think they found out that she was the heiress to Macy's fortune. What? Her dad owned like a a shop in like New York. He, he owned like a music, music studio or something. I don't. Well, also she's a bajillionaire. <laughs> that really puts a damper on her brand. Exactly. That's why she got like canceled. I mean, not that like you her can brand do was like super that. poor or anything, or like she was like really deceptive. Mm-hmm. It's just like, nobody's cool when they're, they're already rich. <laughs> you can be middle-class cool. You can be upper middle-class and still be cool, but you can't be rich and cool. You're fake cool. Are you the gay that squishes the bugs? No. (laughs) Favorite queer movie of all time? I was obsessed with loving Annabelle. Yeah. Like. I liked it. I was obsessed. I really, really like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, though. Yes, Portrait of a Lady on Fire. At least hear that. 
Does Elise like it or not like it? No, she got me because I talk about it incessantly because like people will say that that's their favorite movie. And I'm like, me too. And I go into it every single episode because it's a different person than I'm talking to. But Elise hears it every episode. So she's like, what the fuck? And then she, for Christmas, got me a portrait of a lady on fire um, wall hanging. Fuck yeah. And I I also just like can't think of video movies, gay movies right now for some reason. Loving Annabelle like, was really good. I mean, everyone loves a nice power dynamic, even though it's not healthy. Mm, it's, it's I know. And it was one desirable. of the first queer movies I watched before I was like really comfortable with who I was. It was such a hot sex scene too. And it was a very mm. accurate sex scene, I feel like. It really was. I really Also, I just like yeah. love older women, so. Me too. Oh my God. Last question. Uh, last song you listen to on repeat? Fucking driver's license. Oh, yeah, I've heard about that one. You've heard about that one? It's I've everywhere. I know. Oh my I god, it's, uh, it's every fucking place. I'm just not, you hit. know, I'm just listening to, to a 17 year old <laughs> sing <laughs> about a boy. <laughs> so intense. 17 like, love. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. Um, Mari, if you want to check out more about her, you can find her at mtaren on TikTok and Instagram is Marielle underscore Taryn. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe where you were listening and check out our full video episodes on YouTube. Link is in the description. That is it for this episode. My queers, be you, be queer, stay safe, and we will see you on the next episode.